Hopefully I can wrap up this TV project in this segment. If you recall in part two, I got the set working. And now I want to tie up a few loose ends, one of which is to put a conductive coating back on the CRT the original had flaked off. So I've got it masked off, taking care to put a large circle around where the high voltage connects. And I got the front of it covered up and the neck. And I'm going to be spraying it with slip plate conductive graphite coating. And as for the main chassis, gluing down this bit of cardboard that goes around the speaker. And I reinstalled the tube shield holders that were corroded. I'd removed them and put them in some evapo rust. And I'll need to dig up some shields or fabricate some. The originals had rotted away. They were cardboard tubes with a conductive coating on the inside. The cardboard just fell apart. And I am also installing a polarized connector. I actually want to flip this around. I was just temporarily installing this to see if my shim spacing was correct. The larger pin is ground and I want to have that towards the bottom. I'm also going to rewire this a little bit. In the original they have the switch going to the chassis. So there's a little simplified diagram I made. So in the original the switch was actually over here. I want to put it on the hot side. And the original was not polarized. So I removed that. So I want to just take this larger pin and just connect it directly to the chassis. In the hot pin it's going to get routed up to this power switch and then back down around to the power supply and filament dropper. Here's the yoke completely removed from the set and the crumbling cover. So I could just like hot glue this or epoxy it back in place and just go with it but it's a bit of a mess and the retaining system that holds this yoke in place actually butts up into this and it's just going to continue to disintegrate and the yoke will probably get loose and it just doesn't seem like a, a good plan since I've got this set all taken apart. So what I'm going to try to do is fabricate a new one from scratch and I read up some online instructions on how to do it. However, that was for a more simple yoke cover that did not have these centering magnets on it, which you can actually adjust. They're right inside kind of a groove. So without these, it's basically just a cap. It's like a, a big uh, cap lid. Yeah, I imagine like a bigger version of this with a hole in the middle. Well, what I'm going to do is make one out of styrene. So, first I want to cut out a circle. I like imagine it'll be something like this. With a bit of a larger hole inside. That'll be the flat part here that the rings ride on. And then I want to make an outside strip. Well, I picked up some styrene at a local hobby shop. It's very similar thickness to the original. I tried cutting out a circle with just an X-Acto knife and it didn't turn out very good. So I'm going to try to use this Ulfa circle cutter. It's basically a, a compass that's got a uh, blade on the outside. So adjust this for the right diameter, right radius. Get the center hole located and then go around a few times and hope to cut the styrene. This stuff, uh, basically, if you just score it, you can kind of snap it pretty well. So, then how do I do the outside lip here? Need something about uh, three eighths of an inch, maybe half an inch. Well, I'm just going to cut out a strip along here, wrap it around, and glue it on the edge. I uh, tried to find a strip. They had a, a number of different types of styrene sheets, but they didn't have any with a wide enough strip, so I'll just cut one out of a sheet. That should be pretty easy. And then use this solvent cement, which actually melts the plastic and uh, should fuse it together so it's as strong as if it was a single piece. 
I think that will require some practice because I have not used it before. Likewise, the circle cutter. So, first off, I'm not going to pay any attention to the exact diameter or anything, and I just want to cut out a circle, cut out a strip, and see if I can even do this. I got a bunch of sheets, so I can afford to experiment a bit. All right, looks like we got a bunch of. I think I get, I think I get six blades all together, so that's cool. Yeah, let's see. Okay, looks like you can do some this to get your diameter. So we'll just eyeball it about there. Tighten that down. You know, let me loosen this to get the blade out and then rotate it around on the pivot point. So let's give this a whirl. Right about there. Let's see, the blade is on. It's facing so that I want to do clockwise. Awkward to do because there's really nothing much to hold on to I'm doing this. It's too tough, so you can't just hold this pivot point and spin it if it was a thin piece of paper or something. I gotta use a bit of force. That's staying on the track pretty well. Actually, I think it's probably scored well enough. If I could snap this out, but let me go around one more time for good measure. When you score it, it snaps pretty well. So I didn't cut all the way through, but it's pretty darn close. You can see on this back side, it's deformed. Right, cut down, so a little bit of flexing. Hmm, well, I think I will just try going around a little more. So I really want that edge to be clean. I may want to go around it with sandpaper too when I'm done. Ah, uh, this works better. It's actually wrote. So trying to rotate the compass around 360. Actually, just remove the piece around underneath. And go in short arcs. Pretty much all the way through. There we go. Edges are pretty darn clean, but I want them to be as right an angle in this edge as I can. So when I wrap the strip around, it's got a really flat surface. So a little bit of light sanding. Remove some slight burrs. Perhaps just one more pass with the blade would be a good idea too. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty darn good circle. And then to get the inner part out, of course, I would just decrease the diameter and go around again. But uh, I'm going to leave it to center, just one solid piece. I think it'll make it easier to wrap the outer piece on because it won't flex as much, I imagine. There's more material here. All right, so I need to cut out a strip. Now, will this be enough material? Uh, maybe just, maybe just. I think I'll take out uh, one of these sheets and uh, cut a strip to full length. Now, you may notice too that this stuff's a bit stiff. But I'm thinking once I cut out a strip and there's less material to bend, it'll bend more easily. But also I think what I'll do is maybe just tack glue it a little bit. Let it set up and then kind of wrap my way around. So I'm just trying to wrap it around perfectly and then glue it. Do a little bit of it, a little bit at a time. And a uh, tip on light too is to use like a hose clamp to kind of clamp this all together and keep it in a circle. I don't have one handy, so I'm just going to try it freehand. I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect. If the edges are a little wobbly, a little sloppy, that's not the end of the world. Plus, uh, when it goes onto this, it'll, it'll, you can flex a bit and when it's, it snaps onto here and this will kind of hold it in place on the other side. 
I used a metal straight edge and an X-Acto knife to cut out a strip. And yeah, indeed, it's much more flexible now. So the goal is to wrap it around like so and uh, essentially make a shallow dish. So what I was thinking is I could just apply glue to a small section of the edge of this and get it started and then kind of work my way around. This stuff's supposed to set up really quick so uh, well we are about to see. Apply some unsparingly to the joint, hold 5 to 10 seconds. Bond sets in seconds. Well, 30 minutes to cure. Alright, well only one way to find out. Actually before I do that I think I am just going to take a couple pieces of scrap and play. Oops, battery cut out while I was recording. So, it seemed to me the best technique was to press the pieces together and then touch the brush lightly along the joint and as it says in the bottle, capillary action will draw it into the seam. And it's certainly set up really quick. This is actually pretty strong right now, but it's just uh, 30 minutes to fully set up. Well, I think that's enough for me to now try doing it on this. If it's a little sloppy, that's fine. I mean, this doesn't matter if there's a little bit of overhang or, or whatnot. So I'm just going to go right kind of at the tangent point there. Just to kind of get things started. Curve it a little bit. This is hold five to ten seconds. So. And go a little longer. Okay, got a little too much glue on there. Alright, so I'll let that set up a bit more and then I'll uh, be able to wrap it around, I hope. Here's how my little test sample turned out. Got a little sloppy with the glue around where the seam goes, but otherwise it turned out alright. Seems fairly strong, so I think it's time to go up to the real thing. So I just measured the diameter of the yoke and cut out a circle that I think is the right size. And now I'm going to cut out a strip and start gluing it up. For the thickness, looks like I need to go a little over half an inch. After I cut out a strip longer than I needed, I wrapped it around so it overlapped, scored it, and then snapped it off so it's the right length. And then I grabbed a bit of masking tape to kind of hold it in position. It's a little sloppy here. What I'll do is run a bead of glue around most of it, and once that sets up, I'll deal with pushing that in better. As far as the fit goes, well, it's actually not supposed to fit over this. A bit of board material here, because there's supposed to be tabs that stick down, and they go into slots here. So I, uh, I think I'll glue on some tabs on the outside to make some strips, or inside, uh, whichever works out better. And here's how the cap turned out with four t locking tabs and a circle cut out for the neck to pass through and the centering rings to go around. And it fits on here quite nicely, like so. Alright, so if it wasn't for the centering rings, I could basically call this done, but no. So I removed them by breaking away the plastic from the old 
crumbling yoke housing and then I cleaned off corrosion and I'm pretty sure they went on like so with this bit of paper in between so now the challenge is how to uh, get them to stay on here so what I think I'll do is I cut uh, some more shims out of plastic and bend and glue them around in the center and then once those are glued on I will do some this way to kind of simulate the old Uh, plastic, which was, you can see, it was like a, a cup or a, like a U channel while I went around. I simply cut out another strip of plastic and wrapped it around the interior there and glued it in place. Just enough height to fit the two magnetic rings and the insulator. And then I cut out. Circular bit of plastic, and I'll glue that down there to lock everything together, and that should be it. This goes on the back of the yoke, and then this slides on the neck of the CRT, butts up against this, and that's what holds everything together. And here is the finished yoke cover. I manipulate these as needed to center the picture. Everything is securely glued, so I think I'm ready to proceed with installing this.